Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Sport Office Racing Chair from GT Omega. Time to put it through the SRG review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at the parts that we get with this Sport Racing Office Chair. First off, we get this big unit here, and this is the main unit that is going to be articulating our chair. And this bolts using this bracket right here. These two pieces here are going to be bolted to the bottom of the seat, and we'll see the bottom in a minute here. I've got these two big handles here for manipulation, and I'm going to show you the flip side of this, see how they work. If you look in this hole here, and I use this handle, see if we can get some light in there. You can see that thing, the actual lever in there that's actually moving. And what that does is press down on top of the piston that you see right here, this little white button here. We'll look at a little closer at that in a minute. We also have this piece here, and this is the lock. I'm trying to get a good angle on this so you guys can see it. And the lock actually, obviously, <laughs> is going to lock the chair. See that piece of metal that comes out there? It's actually a little stack of steel plates there. And that's typical in the industry of what we see. So, yep. So when it's out like that, the chair will not lean back. Right. So it's pretty simple what's going on here. We also have this big knob, and you guys are probably familiar with this. This, if you do it counterclockwise, so right here, it's actually going to loosen a spring that's in here. Let me get it out a little bit. You can see that spring. And there it is. And of course, the looser the spring is, the easier it is going to be for us to tilt our chair back in a reclining or just make it a rocking chair if you want, whatever position you want. But it just makes it easier to rock it backwards. So if you're a lighter person like me, you're going to have this looser. If you're a heavier person, then you're going to be tightening it up, turning it clockwise to get it tight again. But I'm, I'm going to have it pretty loose. I, that's the way I usually run my chairs. Right. So, yeah, not much else to see here. The usual industry standard manufacturing from China. Got some plastic plates here, but in the back part where the hinges are, it's all metal or steel. Looks like stamped steel. Right. So let's take a look at that piston we were just talking about. And again, this is the usual thing that we see in these type of chairs. And this button here is where that lever we saw in that assembly is going to push down on. And when you push down on that, it releases this. And it's under gas pressure, so it's going to extend. And that's, of course, what makes the seat go up and down. Now, we also have this little camping cup, collapsible camping cup that comes with your chair. <laughs> now, actually, it's got a big hole in the bottom. This is a little cover for this, and it'll sit just like that right there. So you don't have to see the piston sitting in the bottom of the frame where the wheels go. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. So yeah, again, this is all pretty much standard fare that we see when we get these seats. We have a couple of beauty covers here, at least that's what I call them. And that's just to cover the hinges on the seat. And once we get the bottom attached to the back part of the seat, then we'll put these on and cover up the bolts that we use to attach them. All right. And there's two different ones here. You can see they're shaped a little differently here. This one over here is going to be where the controller is for the, the seat back angle. And this one is just going to be on the other hinge that's kind of on, just comes along for the ride, really, and doesn't do anything except follow what this one's doing. Right. Now, we get some wheels. Now, you can actually get these wheels, which are the stock wheels that come with it, or you can actually get a locking caster set, and I'll show you a shot of that here, for another $30. Not too bad, I think, if you need a locking caster. If you're going to be using this for a gaming chair, then you might want to add that feature to it so that it doesn't roll around on you when you're using your pedals. But yeah, this seems like a pretty solid wheel set here. It's a three inch wheel and it spins pretty easily, actually. So yeah, and I kind of like the mag or the turbine look of it, almost like an airplane engine. <laughs> right, so we'll get all this stuff assembled pretty quickly here once we get to it. And yeah, we also get this, and these are kind of nice. And it goes with the scheme of this chair, which is blue and black, which is actually the SRG colors, blue and black. And it has some really nice embroidery here. All that's showing up there, but there's a really nice job on the embroidery. And we also have 
the head cushion and this is obviously so we can rest our head on the chair you know these chairs are kind of like racing seats and racing seats are kind of have a lot of space behind your head because they're made for helmets and you got a helmet on it it fills the back of the seat nice and they have nice elastic bits here that'll slide over the seat like a lot of chairs that we've had up through the SRG over the years and this one's a little different here because this actually has an elastic also on this the other two or three seats that I've actually gotten in, in built had just regular straps here that had plastic buckles on it that you cinched down which left a lot of stuff hanging out you know once you've got your lumbar support actually put where you want it to put or put where you wanted it to be rather and yeah I kind of like the, the, the actual elastic here and these cushions actually feel pretty good it's not a memory foam cushion it's just, it just feels like the normal cushion fare that you get with these seats this one feels a little bit firmer than this one does but this really doesn't have to be too firm because it is just a lumbar support right so what i'm going to do is clear this stuff off and when we come back we'll take a look at the seat back how that's made the materials and the seat bottom we'll take a look at the seat back first it's got this material on it that they call it synthetic leather because that's what it is obviously <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty good job for the most part as far as the stitching uh, there you know, i really can't find any any problem areas with that stuff I looked all around and you can see that it's the, like I said, the typical fare we get here when, you, when you're looking at these type of office chairs or gaming seats, if you will, you could actually use it for that also. It seems like they've kept the wrinkles out pretty well. The bottom here is nice and tight. I don't see any problems there. And yeah, looks like the stitching in here is pretty good. There is a little bit of, I don't know if you can see this, kind of sticking out a little bit right there, right? but I don't think that's really going to have any effect on it coming apart or anything like that. It's just part of where they snip it off at the factory and just didn't snip enough off. Right, we got some nice stitching here. Gives it a nice pattern in the chair. And actually, I found that kind of nice as far as being attractive. And over here, we have some embroidery, which is the GT Omega wings, racing wings. And the same thing on the top here, the same thing we saw on the cushions. So when you put your head cushion up here, then you won't see this anymore, but the head cushion will have the logo also. Yeah, not a whole lot to see here. We do have the bolts that are pre-installed here, and we're going to take those out, and obviously that's what we're going to be attaching the hinges from the bottom of the seat. And yeah, not a lot to see here. And it, you can see, though, the bolstering here is pretty, pretty thick. I mean, it's thick, but it's very tall. Looking from a side, uh, side angle there, it's pretty tall. You know, I do have some wrinkling here. You can see here, and the only see the lights actually show up worse than it is. But yeah, we got some wrinkling here, but we don't have it on the other side, right? It's, it's kind of smooth right here. So again, this will vary from from seat to seat. I mean, I've I've had some that were, you know, no wrinkles anywhere, and I've had some that had wrinkles everywhere on them. So yeah. It really doesn't bother me either way because it's, you know, this is where I'm actually going to be sitting on. But yeah, I just want to show you guys an example. Like I always do, show you everything there is to see so that you can make your own determinations about things like that, right? So let's go ahead and set this guy aside. And before I get the bottom of the seat up here, I thought I would go ahead and show you what I didn't show you before. Hang on, let me get this over here for you. And that's the bottom. Of course, this is where the casters are going to be pressed into and just nothing special here no colors or anything it's just a, a matte finish or a semi gloss if you will finish black and you can see the inside is the usual cast type of steel it's got the reinforcement pieces in there little fins in there that reinforce it and make it heavy duty makes a nice sound <laughs> that's an indication of quality right <laughs> right so We'll go ahead and put the bottom of the seat up here next. And this is where, this piece is actually a little heavier than the top, as you might imagine. So we'll put this over here. There we go. Now, this, obviously, the bottom is, the stitching is following the same schema, if you will, that the back is. And we have some very tall bolsters here to keep us from sliding out of our chair when we're in our office chairs or gaming and we're getting frantic <laughs> the bottom again it's pretty standard fare here if you guys have seen some of the other seats i've had in the srg 
you know the bottoms kind of look the same here. We have four bolts here, one, two, three, four. And of course, that's where the, you saw in the first segment, that's where we're gonna be bolting the bottom of the chair to. All this is very, very simple stuff, very easy to do. And yeah, it looks like we've got some adjustment here for these arms to come in. You can see the spaces we have here and here, and we also have the same thing on the other side. So I can actually loosen these up and bring these in if I need to, if I feel like you know they're not close enough to my arms, which is kind of a nice setup. There are some chairs that you can't do that to. It's, I'm not sure why, but yeah, you just can't do it and they're kind of set is where these arms are. So I really like that when I flip this upside down. Yeah, I like that because I usually like to, you know, I'm kind of a thin person, so I like to get the arms of my chairs pretty close. We've got the standard elastic straps here that you'll see. They, they kind of help reinforce the cushion on the bottom here from bulging out when you're sitting on a long time. It's just something that makes the seat last a little bit longer as far as life cycle and before it starts bottoming out on you all the time the, and the cushions just don't feel like a cushion anymore. Right, got our hog rings here tied to, this is a metal frame here. You guys can see that very well, but it's typical construction. where You see we've got a, a metal rod going over here. We've also got the same rod following all the way around there, coming across top and down the other side. And these metal hog rings are the, we use some special pliers for these and attach all the vinyl to everything. Typical thing you'll see in the vinyl industry if you've ever done that kind of thing. What else we got here? The arms themselves, very adjustable. You can actually slide it this way. You can slide it in and out. <laughs> and you can slide, I believe you can slide it, yeah, back and forth like that. And of course we have the height adjustment. So very adjustable. In fact, most of these seats, uh, be it from GT Omega or somewhere else, have this type of adjustability built into them. Now it's kind of like everybody's doing it. It's become an industry standard, which is a good thing because yeah, if you don't have this now, then yeah, it kind of makes your chair pale against other chairs when you compare them. We have the, on this side, this is where our lever release is so when we release we pull this lever and that's going to adjust the angle of our back and i think i can get this to move there it is it's really tight spring in here so you got to be careful with this for it'll launch but yeah this is what makes the seat back move back and forth and this one over here is pretty much along for the ride like i said before when we put that cover on this one it just follows whatever this one's doing and that cuts down on the weight there's no sense in having two on them both sides and typically an adjustable batch seat will have that. And yeah, so obviously we're gonna set the top seat, or rather the seat back, into here in between these guys and then bolt them together using those bolts we saw. And yeah, not much else to look at here. Again, I'm looking for wrinkles or any kind of uh, something that we may not like. And this one, the bottom seems to be pretty squared away here. I don't see a lot of, or, or actually any. There is one little wrinkle here. You got how well that's showing up in the light. Just a little bit of one. And you know, a lot of this stuff, these wrinkles, once you start sitting in the seat, they tend to go away because the cushion starts to, get to expand from the weight of you sitting in it and leaning back in it or whatever. So a lot of times this stuff just goes away after a while. And it's just, uh, you know, it could be leaning up against something in the packing boxes that's shipped all over the world. And yeah, it all, all depends though. There's no guarantee, obviously. Right, so not much else to see here, I don't think. So what I'm gonna do is, firstly, I think I'm going to attach the back of the seat. Now it does come with instructions <laughs> in case you don't know how to assemble one of these seats, right? So yeah, we can just take those and throw them away. <laughs> we don't need those instructions, right? So yeah, again, it's pretty simple. It's just bolting this thing together, putting some beauty caps on it. And yeah, this is going to go pretty easily. So what we do, what we're going to do next is when I come back is we'll go ahead and put the back part of the seat on the bottom part of the seat, bolt it together and get it all, all the beauty rings put on and see what it looks like. Right, so let's go ahead and get our seat back attached to the seat bottom. Now, first off, we took these bolts out of the side of the seat, the seat back, and you guys, if you saw the first segment, then you know they were already in the side of the seat there. So we just took those out. Now, normally that'd be fine, just took them out, no problem. We're gonna put them back in once we attach it to the bracket here. But I wanna take this moment to address one of my pet peeves with manufacturing in general, and that is these bolts come out like this. And they actually got a nice kind of a gunmetal gray to them. So 
So it's a nice looking screw set actually. As nice as you can get when it comes to bolts and screws. And it has a lock washer on it. See a little lock washer there. And we have a regular washer right here. Okay, and this is an M8 bolt. And it's a, uh, yeah, this is an M6 hex head. Okay, it's a socket head cap bolt. But one of these bolts came off without a washer. Okay, so we need this washer to make it work right. I mean, you could just go ahead and put this in. Most people probably would instead of going somewhere and finding a washer. I mean, how hard is it, guys, to get the washer in when you're assembling this in the factory? I know it, it might be easier than I think to miss, but yeah, if you're doing this all day, maybe you just get kind of get blurry eyed and you don't see it anymore. But anyway, I ended up sourcing, going over to my screw bin, my spare screws and washers bin. I'm sure some of you guys have one of those. And I found this silver screw, it's an M8 size. But again, this is a gunmetal gray and it's got that nice look to it. And here we got the plain silver one that we're going to have to use. So again, just one of my little pet peeves with manufacturing in general when, when you, you know, screws missing, a washer's missing, whatever. But we are continuing on. We're going to motor on and get this thing built regardless. Right, so all we're going to do now is take the seat back. Pretty easy. Oh, one thing here when you're doing this build you want to keep in mind here. Ooh, let me pick this up instead of just shove it. Is this the back hinge that we talked about before? You want to kind of fold that back, right? Because if you don't and you mount, put the seat on, it has this big bolster on the side here, as you see, right here. And it's kind of angled out. So if you had it forward when I put the seat on, if I had it like this and I put the seat on and then tried to bring it back to, to connect this side, it would be hitting the bolster and then I had to push the bolster. It, you know, it, it becomes a fight then. So to avoid that, just put it on that side, right? This is very simple stuff here, as you guys might imagine. We just put the seat back up here. If I can get this lined up so you can see it. And of course, all we want to do is line up our holes here so that our bolts will go in there. Easy enough. And you might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get the right. <laughs> Look at that. I almost did my pet peeve to myself. I forgot to put that extra washer on. <laughs> ah, you got to love this stuff. All right, now we got our washer on. Now I noticed that because, yeah, this lock ring looked like it wanted to go through that hole. Right, so let me line this back up again. There we go. Right, so again, this stuff is really simple, pretty easy, and you, you just get stuff started first. You don't want to tighten it all the way down yet. And there we go. And I have my handy wrench here that I'm just going to run these down a little bit. I'm not going to tighten them down. I'm just going to run them up. There we go. See, we're still kind of wiggly in there. You can wiggle it around. So I'm going to have to probably wiggle it to get this other side in. And I'm going to try to turn this around without my mat moving on me. Not easier said than done. There we go. Don't move. All right. It's a lot easier to do when you're not shooting video, as you might imagine. All right, so now we've got this seat sitting here. And again, as you can see, this bolster, if I had that hinge up here, it would be hitting this bolster because it kind of comes out at an angle. So much easier when we just slide it up here. Now, all we have to do is find our holes and make sure we have our washers on when we put our bolts back in. And it's just, you just gotta get down there and look for it. Sometimes this vinyl gets in the way though and can be kind of a pain to find it. But yeah, being on a bench like that gives me a better, better angle on it than if I was sitting on the floor trying to do it. And hopefully all these line up like they're supposed to. Let's go ahead and run them up a little. There we go. Piece of cake. And my tool sticks. Never had that happen before, have you? So we'll run this one. Sorry about the noise. And of course, we're ready to go now, right? In fact, I'm not going to tighten the other one down yet. I'm going to go ahead and get my little beauty cover here. And remember, we have, we have two of these. We have two of these. Don't mind, don't mind the noise down there. <laughs> so, yeah, this one has a straight piece on it. This has the little L bend on it. Get some light there so you can see it. This one will go on, this one goes on the other side because of that big piece hanging out where we adjust the angle of our seat. This one should just go right on. And the idea is it just snaps right on. So, let's see if that happens. 
And if this hole down here is lining up when you press it in, then the other one should kind of come into line. And I try to usually just <laughs> get it to grab. And it doesn't look like these are grabbing too good. They're lined up. I can see that they're lined up. It's the middle piece here you got to get in. Let me go ahead and show you that again. I can get that out without breaking anything. There we go. This is the piece that we're interested in, right? So it, it needs to go in this hole here. And you can see it has little notches on it, right? So those notches need to be pressed in and it, and it wasn't doing it. So, but once you know where the hole is and what you're supposed to be doing here, you can usually get it to go by pushing where it is. Oh, there we go. Bingo. Oh, nope, it just came back out. <laughs> Let's see here. There. Now we're talking. Now it's tight. So that was easy, right? So what we're going to do is put the other side on. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and put the bottom piece on this seat so that we can actually mount it to the wheel base that's going to have the piston sitting in it. So we'll get to that next. So now we're going to go ahead and put the bottom assembly on the seat. But I wanted to show you this side first so that you guys can see that, yeah, We've got the bolts tightened up and we've got the little beauty cover on there. And this one actually went on easier than the other side did, in case anyone was wondering. Right, so all we've got to do is kind of get this up on its corner, pivot it around, lay it back, let it squeak on my rubber mat here. And there's four bolts here. These we saw before, if you saw the closer look, that's what we want. I'll go ahead and take one off by hand. And there's the same M8 socket head cap bolts and they have the lock washer and the other washer on there also. Right, which goes to, uh, to reason they could have just put a whole new, you know, an extra bolt with the washer and lock washer in there just for the heck of it. So we'd have, I wouldn't have to go look for that other washer, right? Just an idea. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take these off with the, a little bit faster with this and I'll probably uh, mute this out <laughs> when I actually do the video editing because this is kind of loud. All right, we've got them all four out. Now, this thing goes on with the spring tensioner towards the front of the seat. And at least that's what the directions say. I did look at the directions for that because you know you get it around the other way and it's just not gonna work right. And as you can see, the piston hole here where it captures that gas piston up in the front just doesn't make much sense anyway. So what we're gonna do is, again, very easy here. All we're gonna do is Put these bolts in here this is a little bit got a little bit of weight to this thing so yeah you want to just kind of get it located up there and see if you can get your bolt started and again this is pretty easy stuff it's just a little time consuming when you don't have everything lined up and ready to go and when you're also shooting video yeah it's going on pretty good here so once you get the top two in then you can just hang it and let it sit there and get the rest of them in at your own leisure. In fact, I might have to pick up on this a little bit. Yep, just so I get that hole centered. One more, and then we can run them down. Like that. Now, we're gonna make some noise again. And really, as far as you, there is a little bit of, of play here, back and forth, but I'm not really certain if that makes a lot of, of, of issues it might be you know if to balance the seat you might have to come back and readjust that up or back a little bit but yeah it's not a whole lot of adjustments so i just don't know how much you would really have to do that but anyway let's go i'm going to actually kind of get it centered where i think it's centered and go ahead and run it down all right so, as you saw there, I finished the bolts out without this powering this on because, yeah, to get the lock washers to lock right, uh, you really don't want to power down too much with this. That's why I usually run it down. Just use this to run things down, and then it has that ratchet action to where we can hand tighten, and you can feel where it's going that way because you don't want to strip one of these out. You strip one of these out, and you've got big problems. You know, even if you have a nice tap and die set like I do, it's still, you know, a pain to go in there and fix all the threads that you just messed up. And if you run, if you actually stripped it out, 
and the head broke off or something, then you're gonna have to drill it out and, all, and it's a big mess. So anyway, better to finish off in a hand tightening configuration, I think, than using, just running it down and don't worry about it. Right, so that was pretty easy, right? Nothing to it. So now, what we're gonna do is get the wheelbase on here, we're gonna put the casters on it and get the piston installed, and then the final thing obviously will be sitting this seat on top of the base and joining them together, and yeah, we'll get to that part next. Okay, now we can go ahead and put our wheels on our wheelbase that we saw earlier in the closer look segment. And first off, this is typical of these casters, how they go into these ready-made chairs and all you're doing is assembling it. And it has this lock ring on it. Well, not really a lock ring, rather a spring, kind of a ring there. See it moving around? There you go. So when we actually push this in, this clip will actually compress and then keep friction on this so it won't fall out when we lift the chair up and we're moving it around. Now, sometimes these can be really easy to put in, maybe not so easy to put in, and just real tough to put in. But I'm hoping these will go in easy. In case they don't, if, ever, if you ever run across that situation, I do have my persuader here. And this is a sand-filled <laughs> little mallet that's got nylon ends on it so it won't mar things up when you tap on it. But yeah, sometimes you have to use something like this to get them in, but I'm hoping that, that won't be the case. So, but we're prepared, right? And it's pretty simple. Just gonna turn this upside down, put it on a hard surface so I can press down on it with some weight. And sometimes if you kind of wiggle it around as you're pushing it in, it helps facilitate the compression, facilitate rather, the compression of that ring. And yeah, there it goes. Kind of working in a little bit. And this should go all the way down. So I just drove it home there. So yeah, didn't need the mallet for that, even though it was a little stiff to go in. So obviously we're gonna do this for the rest of the wheels and I'll probably speed that up just so you don't have to sit here and watch me do the rest of these. Right, so now we've got them all done. Now, again, these are not the casters with the locks on them, so you gotta be careful once you have this thing live with the wheels, it really <laughs> rolls quite easily, which is a good thing, you want it to do that. Now, all you gotta do is drop this piston in here now. And that's a very simple matter, just taking it and dropping it in like that. And it kind of actually kind of sticks. In fact, <laughs> it's stuck right doing it, just doing that mark. Let me bring this back out. I'm gonna show you something that it, it's got this taper on it and it's, it's hard to tell, it's easy to tell this taper, but there's still a taper on this cylinder here that gets bigger as it goes in, as it goes towards this, this end of it here. So as we drop it in, it actually snugs up, self tightens itself or self tightens like that. So usually this won't come out. And after you've actually sat on it, depending on your weight, of course, yeah, this thing can be almost impossible to get out of one of these frames and you end up having to throw the whole thing away if the gas shot goes bad on you. But yeah, chances are though, if you get the right persuasion, you might be able to get it out. Right, so all we gotta do now is get our little plastic piece, little beauty ring put on here. Again, very simple stuff. We just kind of set it there like that. And there it goes. Now you can see, I still got some room here, but that's currently this piston is all the way compressed. So once we actually get it on the seat and use it, then this will actually be able to go up this high to cover the shaft so you don't have to see it, right? Pretty cool stuff. Well, that was simple. Now all we've got to do is put this on the floor and grab the seat and carefully put it on here. And yeah, then we're done. So when we come back, we'll have that done and see what it looks like. Now that we have the seat fully assembled, we can actually take a look at what it, it looks like in real time. <laughs> actually, it spins very easily. And that's one of the test I used to, I like to do to see. So is there any grinding noises, you know, any squeaks, things like that. Very quiet and it rolls very easily. Yeah, not much to not like about the operation of that. I do have the lumbar cushion in here now just to show you guys what it looks like. I will not be using it. I just don't like lumbar supports. They just, they seem to hurt my back more than they help it. And I'm not sure why, but that's the way it is. Right, so easy enough, sit in. And this, this seat is actually, a little bit, see my feet aren't, of course I'm short, so I know that. 
my feet aren't flat on the ground when I'm sitting in this seat right now. So um, I typically like a seat that lets me do that. I'm kind of dangling here. It does have a nice stiff back on it though. And I'm gonna unlock it and show you the difference of reclining it. So you can actually lean it back. But it has a very stiff back when, when you actually clamp it down. And I was thinking that, yeah, this actually has the bolter, the bolsters are very stiff, very nice on the, on the waist here and on the seat. Now, if you're a big guy, like 185 pounds or so or bigger, you would probably want to get the extra large seat they have. They have an XL series that's obviously bigger and wider than this is. But this fits pretty, pretty good. I could actually use this, find a way to lock it down. In fact, I would probably get the locking casters if I bought this to use for gaming because then the seat wouldn't move and you could actually sit there with your with your feet up in there using pedals your pedals about that high or so or maybe it depends on where they are i guess but yeah you could actually drive with this and and feel like you're really in the car because that's how good that these these side supports are squeezing me so it's i kind of like that actually it feels pretty good and of course the adjustability is great with all of the different things we can do so yeah this this seat will fit just about anybody i'm about five eight though and you can see my feet aren't quite, see how it shows in the video there, aren't quite level on the ground. And I kind of like a seat that is that does that. But then again, after a while of sitting on it, this cushion may actually go down a little bit. So kind of self-corrects. Only thing I really, uh, a little bit, you know, the quality control here with this fake leather is, you know, the crease is right here. That could have been done better because we can look right over here and see there are none. Now, it doesn't really bother you when you're sitting down in the seat, but it's just one of those things, you know, a $370 seat, I would like to see that not being there. But, you know, it's up to you if you get a seat and, you know, if you want to <laughs> send it back and, and get another one that doesn't have that maybe. But, yeah, it really doesn't bother me. But, again, you know, the SRG videos are all about showing you every, every little thing I can so you guys can make about as informed decision as you can without actually going and sitting in a seat yourself. I do like the stitching here and the stitching and the grooves in between that stitching. It does give it a very nice finish and look to it. And I do like the black and blue. Some people might not want black and blue, but it reminds me of how bruised I am sometimes on long stints of racing when I get out of the cockpit over there. <laughs> right, so yeah, we'll just get to the final, set, final thoughts next. Final thoughts on G2 Omega Sports Series office slash gaming chair. I like this unit has a lot of adjustability in it. Just the arms have no less than four different ways to adjust them. Of course, you have the expected adjustments to height and seat angle that most chairs have. I was able to find a comfortable seating position, but would have liked the chair to go down just a little bit lower to accommodate, well, my short legs <laughs> and get my feet flat on the ground. The tilt spring tension adjustment had plenty of range to let me dial in a balanced feeling rocking motion. As for the synthetic leather used to cover this chair, I found it to be one of the thickest seen yet at the SRG, which would indicate a good wear characteristic. All the stitching was clean for the most part, with just one little frayed stitch found in the whole unit. Now, the one thing I will give this chair is for the wrinkles in the covering on the right side upper bolster section. Not something I would expect in a chair at this price point, but GT Omega did respond to the issue straight away and the whole seat back assembly will be replaced under warranty. Nice to see a manufacturer standing behind their products this way. Another noticeable difference with this chair is the weight. It comes in at 30 kilo or 66 pounds. Not that mass guarantees quality, but does decrease any noticeable flex when sitting in it. And gives some credence to the stated 150 kilo or 330 pound weight capacity this chair has. Overall, this chair sits nicely among other office chairs in this price range, I think. And it is worth a look if you're in the market for one. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. I'm Barry Rowland. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.